Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be doing my Episode 11 review, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any Supergirl videos later this year. So this episode was really great. I was hooked throughout. It was very emotional at points, especially to do with Nia. I truly fell in love with Nia and her family. I think her sister... Maeve was actually really good. I really, really liked the performance by her, and I was just really invested. This reminded me of the Midvale episode back last season, although it's, it's sort of different in the way it was presented and put together in the episode, it still really worked, and I really liked it, and so we got a lot of Red Daughter stuff as well, which is a massive bonus, and we'll be breaking it down bit by bit in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into this. So, we start off the episode with Red Daughter as she's, you know, doing her training as we saw last episode. It may have been a repeated scene or not, I can't remember exactly, but she lands and she falls over. And just before she falls over and gets knocked out or potentially dies because they have to use the sort of defibrillators to revive her or something. And blood comes out of her nose and so she's weak and so there is a fault in who she is and the way that she is right now so is she dying we don't know but it seems like she is after this when she fell to the ground her powers and what was inside of her actually spread and went all around the world you saw the surges on the outside of the earth go into these different places and they land into some tablets in america so you know it's kind of fitting but i really liked how they started it off with red daughter and how they end it we'll talk about that in just a second and so it turns the people into monsters essentially, giving them superpowers for a brief period of time. And it was described as pure rage inside of them and it was the gamma rays. So is this the same thing that created or was very similar to how Red Daughter was created from Kara and how Lena actually created that. So via her use of the Haranel back at the end of season three when Red Daughter first landed was she created out of that and was she created out of pure anger and rage as it was described in this episode and i think that is why she is kind of one dimensional in this sort of way that she can be manipulated that we've been seeing from the Kaznians and the Russians and whoever's controlling her. And so it changes the other people's DNA. So most likely this is all referencing back to how Red Daughter was created, that her DNA has been manipulated from Kara's and this Haranel actually caused her to become Red Daughter and she is rid of all those other feelings apart from rage and that's why she is the Red Daughter and I really like that part, that opening to the episode. But right at the end of the episode we go to Kaznia and we see Red Daughter knocked out or she's dead or asleep. I can't really tell because they tried to resuscitate her but I don't know if that failed or not. But nevertheless she's still there, her eyes are closed and they need to get someone from America. So who is this person that they're calling? We know Lex Luthor is going to be coming in in episode 15 and from all these hints that there is some sort of mastermind behind what they're doing in training her to, you know, fight things that are bigger than a tank. As they said last episode, I believe it could be Lex Luthor. I think that's the most logical thing that we can go with right now. Obviously you could suggest other people but considering we know Lex is going to be appearing I think that is probably who he's actually contacting or someone who is in cahoots with Lex and essentially someone that wants this power to control this power and maybe this is a way for Lex to break out of prison or something like that but you can check out my Lex Luthor video yesterday. Later in the episode, just as we start, we get this really nice game night scene with the Danvers sisters teaming up, you know, so in sync together, and it was just a really nice way to sort of go off from that kind of strange opening that I really liked, and, you know, it's just great seeing this Danvers sisters stuff, and the fact that they're so together, and then by the end of this scene, Alex can't remember Kara's favourite film, and as you guys know if you've watched Supergirl since the very start, it's always The Wizard of Oz, which is something that me and Kara personally share as well. My favourite film is The Wizard of Oz and The Dark Knight, so, you know, two favourites, very similar. But anyway, so she can't remember that her favourite film is The Wizard of Oz. At first she was like, oh, is it this film, this film, this film? She says Terminator at one point, but essentially she can't get it right, and so 
she doesn't remember that she's Supergirl and she feels like throughout this episode there is something wrong inside her mind and later in the episode Jean lies to Alex giving her the placebo effect as he called it so essentially pretending that there was nothing wrong with her but he obviously knows there is because they can't reveal to her because she may reveal that she knows Kara is Supergirl to Haley, and this has ramifications later in this episode. And so one part of the episode that had me kind of puzzled and I was like, mm, why did they include it, is the woman, I don't actually know her name, but she's appeared a couple of times in Catco when she goes up to James and she says something about genetic testing, oh, I've looked into this, my source has given me this, and it's just a bit weird that it just suddenly came up, it was just so random, and it felt misplaced and there was no context as to why this person would be giving all this information and why she is interested and why the hell does she know it's genetic testing? That makes no sense. Lena wouldn't have marked that down anywhere. Maybe there is funds being used elsewhere but she would not know it's genetic testing. So that bothered me a little bit but that's just a tiny part of the episode and later in the episode James lies to her about this actually not being true. And so one of my favorite scenes in the episode was Nia and her mum. When Nia was driving in the car with Kara in the episode to her hometown, we see a dream and this dream sort of had me like, what the hell is going on? Because it's just out of nowhere. And I love the aesthetics and the way the scene is shot and the color correction with the blue and how sort of fairy tale like it is, like Alice in Wonderland or something. And yeah, so wow, what a, what a scene, probably my favorite part of the episode and so it's very demonic in this dream world and it's just like a major WTF moment because her mom disintegrates and turns into a raven which when you look at the end of the episode you understand it's a symbol of death that all these symbols were being hinted at her in the dreams and she points out that she dreamt of her daughter becoming a dreamer a while ago and so Maeve, Nia's sister, actually imagined that she was going to be the dreamer because you know, Nia was born a boy. And essentially what they were saying in this episode was that Nia was always supposed to be a woman and she was destined to become a woman and it was part of her destiny, but they didn't see her at first because they were blinded by the fact that she was a boy, but you know, with the powers of dreaming of the future, it could most definitely be Nia because now she's a woman. It makes total sense. And so Maeve at the end of the episode they have a fight and she's not over it and Nia's very upset, we'll talk about that when we get to it, but I really loved this part of the episode, I thought it was great, and the scene where she comes out to Kara being transgender, I thought Kara knew by now, but it was a really affecting scene, it was nice that she revealed it, and at the end of the episode there's a great scene between Nia and Kara which we'll talk about when we get to it. So Alex in this episode, so like I said something's off with her and by the point where there's that massive battle with the Children of Liberty inside the town, Parthos as they called it, Alex and Kara have this fight but, in, but instead of being Alex and Kara it's Alex and Supergirl and so her view of aliens have, has been erased as Jean says later but yeah this fight between them is due to the fact that Alex really has lost a lot of her sort of morals and the way she views aliens so she's more along the lines of Haley. you can see the sort of elements although she has the good instincts of Alex still inside of her she has that blindness to caring to all aliens essentially and so throughout this episode Kara is with Nia and her sister they do an interview at one point they're having family dinners and things like that it's just some really nice scenes and Nia's mum is said to have helped the town with her powers and Nia is one of the only people from her town to actually leave and essentially they were teasing throughout the episode that the dreamer is always supposed to become a hero and Maeve wanted to be a hero and you know she's going to be in denial as she is at the end of the episode and so as the pills you know treacle out throughout the episode throughout America they all end up in the Harvest Fest and there's chaos with the Children of Liberty and with this character called Bobby, this young little girl, the sister of one of the guys who found the pills inside his caravan. She comes for revenge and she's really vengeful and it's all linked into Alex and Kara and their relationship. There is another dream scene which I really loved. It was very similar in aesthetics to that scene that I said was my favorite with Nia's mum being bitten and she's back in the dream and Nia and her mum are in the dream and she says you are ready and she said she had the water amulet and Nia has the fire amulet and essentially she says you are ready 
I was blinded this whole time and you are meant to be the dreamer and I can die now and she dies and that's what causes the sort of memorial for her mother and yeah, I thought it was really well done. I really liked the way everything played out. And so, like I said earlier, by the end of the episode, when Nia reveals to Maeve due to her actually predicting that the Children of Liberty guy was about to chop her down because she could predict the future, she storms off and by the end of the episode, Maeve rejects Nia and she said a very shitty thing. So hopefully we see the return of Maeve very soon. I think they're definitely kind of teasing that, but she was really great in this episode and that ending was like, oh, what the fuck? You are cold. Like, your sister has got the powers, but you're so into the idea that you could have saved your mom and that you could have actually been a hero, but now your sister is and she was originally a boy. She's just sort of stuck where she is right now. And I think by the end of the end of this season, we'll visit her again and she'll come around because what she said was very shitty, as you probably picked up in the episode, because that was like a major sort of WTF moment for me. The biggest WTF moment was when Kara storms out the car with Nia as they head home to National City, and she flies up in the air, and she lands, and it's like, oh my god, I love that scene. That scene sort of had me shivering, because it was just like, wow. And Nia's reaction to Kara revealing she's Supergirl was just incredible, and it's sort of connected. They have similar struggles with their sisters right now, and it's only going to make them stronger together. And so Nia, at the end of the episode, another bone-chilling moment was when Nia opens the box and she sees her superhero suit that I love that poster and I'm very excited. I'm really liking Nia now. She's definitely warmed up to me. As I've said previously, I was sort of liked her, but I didn't like her all too much. But I didn't not like her. So now I'm sort of like, yes, I'm on board with all of this. And so as I said, the episode ends off with Red Daughter being knocked out, being dead or asleep or whatever's going on. And they need to call someone from America. Who is that? We theorized about that before. Probably Lex Luthor. So anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also, follow me on Twitter and tweet me your reactions to this Supergirl episode at the DC TV show, and I'll be sure to message you back. So thank you guys so much for watching. This was a really great episode, and I will see you guys later for my trailer breakdown for next episode. So goodbye.